Travis Wayne gets on. <clears throat> Article of Faith number 12. We believe in being subject to kings, presidents, rulers, and magistrates in obeying, honoring, and sustaining the law. So, pop quiz, Mormons. What is the supreme law of the land? I'll give you a hint. It's not Jesus. It's the United States Constitution. <clears throat> Utah Law Code, which according to Article 6 of the Constitution, is supposed to be made in pursuant of the Constitution. And so, Utah Law Code 765308. Human trafficking for labor. <clears throat> I'm sure you are familiar with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. That made big news coverage, especially with uh, Giselle Maxwell, who helped him. That was for sex trafficking, and it's a branch off of human labor trafficking. But in this particular case, it's the same pattern in which Jeffrey Epstein was the main person who ran the operation. He was the criminal boss, if we're going to use the criminal organizational administrative structure. Giselle Maxwell was the one who recruited the women for the human trafficking, sex trafficking. And then uh, she would also arrange for the payment with uh, the criminals who would pay for these women. <clears throat> and so uh, it was rather small in its operation, but the amount of women that they sex trafficked was a horrifying number as well as the clients who paid for these women and so as Mormons knowing about article of faith number 12 now knowing the law that human trafficking for labor is against the law and is a violation of the Word of God through the living prophet at the time, he's the founding prophet, we'll say, Joseph Smith, even though it was in his uh, Wentworth letter, <coughs> is still canonized for Mormons. And so here I am in the Utah men's shelter. And uh, rather than repeating the history of how this came to exist, we'll uh, go over the church's involvement. In January 2021, the church announced on their church news that they had given to the shelter, well, three of them specifically, so that each of them got 1.1 million. 3.3 million and uh, if you do not understand how it works the shelter is a corporation it's a private corporation it's a non-profit corporation according to Utah and federal tax filings and as such the money goes to them for the corporation it does not go for the homeless if you're wanting to donate to the homeless, you've got to donate actual, physical, tangible goods rather than money for the homeless. That's the only way the homeless will benefit from donations. And, <clears throat> and so the uh, church appears to be good, right? They're giving money to the shelter. Well, the money that the church gave was not 
from the church. It was donated money for the specific purpose of uh, charity, according to 501c3 for charitable companies. And uh, Nelson has informed us, as a response to the whistleblower of Enzyme Peak Advisors, that the money given for the purpose of donating has a separate LLC company that a 10% reserve gets laundered into. And that money never gets spent. It just continues to increase interest and is an investment into the stock market. He said that is the pattern for all sources of income, not just Enzyme Peak Advisors for tithing. <coughs> and so, with the money donated to the shelter, that came from other people who donated the money to the church, which the church is profiting off of through a money laundering operation, the church is again laundering the money that they're giving to the shelter because Gail Miller is one of the top people involved with the shelters and there are a board of trustees for the shelters in which the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has a representative uh, Rick Foster is the one for the shelter and uh, <coughs> They get paid from the donations that are given. And as the state of Utah also gives, which comes from Utah tax dollars, they are not being used for the homeless. They are being used for the corporation and the payment of the income, the wages for the board of trustees. And it's quite a lot of money that they get. And, uh, and as Mormons, every single one of them, us, them, must pay tithing back to the church. This is not an option. It's not a donation. It's not a free will offering. It is forced. Every Mormon knows this. You must pay. And it's not a payment for, <clears throat> uh, you know, like for uh, participation in the temple to get married, for example. You might expect that they would require payment for services rendered. Well, no, because we are constantly paying every single time we get any income. 10% of all we make must go to the church for our whole life. It, and so it's different than paying for services or paying for goods. It is a criminal money racket, protection racket, because the church says that we have to pay in order to be worthy it's number 10 in the interview questions for Temple Recommend. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are promised protection from the day that shall burn as an oven, as well as receive an afterlife inheritance in the highest degree of the celestial kingdom. These are fraudulent criminal operations because it is not a tangible immediate return for our payment. <clears throat> it is a protection racket. By law, under the laws of protection rackets. RICO also has laws that cover this, which are specifically designed for criminal organizations. And so, the homeless are not getting resources. We are, in fact, getting more homeless. 
we are over packed with the winter time we had overflow then uh, they have begun and have built or remodeled uh, the unused offices to now house uh, more homeless in cots and then those are all filled up now and so any extra overflow goes into the overflow in the dining area downstairs this is what's going on we have got now over 400 homeless who are not receiving anything as resources to help them get out of here and get a place to live the state of Utah made sure of that because the state of Utah have been granting uh, leases property for apartment builders and home builders for very expensive apartments and homes they're supposed to have some for those who are poor but there's far too many and there's too much direction that goes on and so that's why there's an increase in the homeless here at the men's shelter of over 400 now and in the concept of human trafficking by getting donations to house the homeless but not give to the homeless but pay for their paychecks their lifestyle we are being human trafficked as homeless a very definition that is given here we are being recruited by the shelter they are Giselle Maxwell for the LDS Church who gets the kickback money from tithing as they are harboring us and uh, uh, and they are soliciting the government and others for more money as more homeless are brought in because this is what they're gonna do we are having a mass amount of new homeless we need more money they've had over 300 million and none of it is going to us but this is what they're doing and so we are chattel as homeless just like Mormons are chattel to the Mormon Church and as such human trafficked and with the chief of police Caruth you can look him up online it's not revealing any secrets having talked with him and filed a complaint with him about what's going on to us he's now acting as what's called in the criminal organization structure an associate those who are in government who are police who are certain people in the community who uh, help turn a blind eye to what's going on and that's what he's been doing he's been trying to uh, get me out of here so that I can't file complaints anymore and that I can move on and continue the practice and uh, refusing to do his job and turning a blind eye to what's going on and it's made worse because this is a meth house they are allowing the use of meth and other drugs this place is contaminated and as contaminated according to Utah law it must be shut down and decontaminated this place is supposed to lose their license for the mistreatment the inhumane treatment of the homeless for the human trafficking and for the exposure to the meth residue poisoning sickness that everybody's got I'm going on four weeks of the sickness and all they're telling me to do is leave go out go to the library spend the day in the library stay away from this place and you won't be sick that's not how it works it's 
not how it works. First of all, they know that I'm doing videos about the church and such, but, but uh, when you have an organization that pushes obedience to the laws of the land, but are in complete and utter violation of the laws of the land, there's a concluding scripture I'd like to read for you that summarizes exactly what's going on here in the state of Utah. It's Helaman, chapter 6. And uh, 21, Satan did stir up the more part of the Nephites in that they united with a band of robbers and entered into their covenants and their oaths to protect and preserve one another in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed that they would not suffer for their murders their plunderings and their stealings and of course they had their secret sign of the inverted pentagram on the keystone of the Salt Lake Temple Lucifer's symbol the secret sign the secret words secret covenants with the knife that used to be the death penalty so that they would protect themselves contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. As I just read to you, Article of Faith number 12 and the United States Constitution and the Utah Law Code for that 